Well, it's time to go there. But before we go there, first let me say this. <coughs> this is your absolute most favorite entertainment news and talk show on the internet. On the social media occasions, you and I, we are the premier entertainment news and talk show. So look, go ahead and tell Nada Dada everyone about it that Larry Live is on. And today, we're going to be on twice. Jesus, Lamb. Mm. So I'm coming on right now just to pick it up from where I stopped on the last show. If you have not watched the entire Dr. Juanita Bynum and also the pastor and first lady John Moore fiasco, then you, sir, ma'am, ma'am, sir, you're behind. Take your hips in the archive section here on the Facebook or on the YouTubes and make sure, or Periscope, and make sure you catch up. You got to stay up to what's going on. And if you say, I don't want to catch all that stuff in between the week. Okay, well, Mondays, Mondays, we always go from anything in the world, pop culture, church, and everything. We catch everybody up on everything. We commentate about it. So you need to make sure that you are up on the up. So you know what's going on, because this is where we have the conversation absolutely. Right now, hit that share button. If you're watching me on YouTube, there is a special kind of nigga by the name of Larry Clark that is the responsible party of telling YouTube orations a lie and then prove that lie. And I would, if I weren't paying so much in, in, in attorney fees already now, I would just go ahead and get you. But I know you ain't really got nothing, so I ain't going to do it. But he's the whole reason why, and that's not allegedly, I have the receipts to prove it. He's the reason why I'm not live on the YouTube orations. So make sure that you don't support nothing that he do. All right, so let's go. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm not going to put that out there, of course. Support him, but you just need to know what truth is. All right, so anyway. That's Denise Bradford Clark, sorry son. That's what I call him. He's the sorry son. And she may not like me saying this because that is her son and I know blood is thicker than water, but this is commentary. And I can say what the whole hell and the heaven that I want to say when I sit up here in this director's chair because this is my show and it's my mouth with an F. M-O-U-F. It's mine. And I think you sorry because you need to be taking you to the studio instead of um, dragging Twinkie. And I literally mean that. Dragging her to the studios and using her for a come up. But anyway, that ain't what I'm talking about today. But see, I wasn't going to do this show. I ended it and I fin at the end of the show when I was talking about um, when Unica Chambers, one of the bottoms, um, assistant that whole thing with the Hilton Hotel. I think I ended that show talking about the Jezebel and the Jezebel Network. So, so many of you asked about me doing a show concerning it. Well, I heard you, but I won't gonna do it. I'm just gonna tell you what truth is. So I said, well, let me just give them this. And I made a specific post, Pacific post. <laughs> you know, we say Pacific sometimes. We don't always say specific, but I'm gonna show you what that post is. And that's how we're gonna start off today's show. And I'm not running any commercials, so you ain't got to walk away because I'm coming on twice. I run the commercials later on this evening. Let me tell you what's going to be going on this evening. This evening at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to have the brainchild. What is it, Kendall? Huh? I'm going to say it now and hush your fuss. Just let me be do, do the show. You just do be a hepa out and click and hush. Click and hush. Click and hush. This evening, the brainchild behind, come here. You know all that stuff that been going on with Denise Clark Bradford and the Clark sisters and this here movie that's coming out. You got all these singers, Kiki Sheard and Christina Bell and some of the rest of them I can't remember right now. That's all in that movie. And you know, they went and had the reveal and had all of that uh, over the trailer and stuff. Well, you know the person that was behind that, Dr. Holly Carter? I got some questions for her. You remember her post that she made? Tell me, I reached out to Denise, no, no, no. And I'm like, mm -mm. well, she ain't scared of Larry Live. She gonna be here tonight at nine o'clock. So look, make sure after Sunday best go off, Dr. Holly Carter is coming to the show. And I can ask her any darn 
thing. And I just hit Denise. I said, there's something you want me to ask her? She, she talking about something else because she really going through something right now. But I'm going to tell y'all about that later on because um, she coming back here to the show. And we're going to talk about that as well. But tonight, we're going to find out about that. And there's some other things that she got going on. And I'm going to also tell y'all a story you never heard as relates to her that I have not shared, I don't think. Maybe I have on, on one of my other sites. I'm going to do that tonight. But right now, what we're going to do on today, we're going to talk about, because I, I, the quest, the whole thing, put you there about one of the them. This whole situation, not that one, just her, one of the end people. This, they, this whole situation here got me asking a whole bunch of questions. Now, those of you that have been following Larry Live for any long time, you remember when a long time ago when Juanita Camp and my camp, basically it was former co-host Vincent Terrell Buddha Hill. It was basically him that they had a whole thing and I was trying to mediate between them and all that. I ain't never been, I ain't no enemy of nobody. I don't dislike too many. Not too many. But I tell you if I just don't really like nobody. And I really, because I know this child originated as a prophet of God, and I am saying originated, I hope nobody gets offended. She probably going to take offense. But from the outside looking in, you, you prophet, yeah, false prophet, mm-hmm. you leaning that way. Jezebel, mm-hmm. You looking like the Jezebel, for real. Your team, uh, this looking like the Jezebel network. So it's this, this is what, and because of that, this whole fiasco and how this was handled, it's looking really funny. Now, y'all know, if you go down my IG for Larry Live, you see where I talked about and announced her getting this TV show on the Impact Network, and then also she returned back to a conference with Jakes. That's how we all basically came to know who she is. I praise her to my up. Her stars rising again. She got a show back. She done built that studio up there. And, and now she back on the Jake stay. Oh, this is looking good. Now this here. And this looking like a whole problem. Now they tell me that the video that she originally done has been taken down. But the damage has already been done. Because you got the Atlanta star. You got Ricky Smarty. You got uh, this one, that one, this nation. Everybody who's going to pick up this story as one of about them being violated by a pastor who went to sniff, play with, and look at her prophetic panties and her Baptist bra. Well, if you follow this show, and I'm just going to keep it real, it appears that there's a little grace on the Larry Live to have certain receipts and certain interviews when it comes to getting to the root of the problem. And when you look at the interview I did with the Moors, and then Unica Chambers, who is her assistant, actually called into the show. We listened to what she said, and she manifested on the show. Okay, that deleted. She manifested, just delete that whole shot. She manifested on, it's not important, we really need to delete the whole shot. She manifested on the show. We heard what she said. Then the next follow-up show, because I heard from the person that was at the front desk, the next show we heard what she said, and that corroborated. It was just like the story that John Moore and Unica told, except for the fact, except for the fact, what she said, John did, John said he ain't do. What she said, the hotel people said, he said. Well, they didn't say he said it, but that what they she said to a hotel that said that there was there is their bras and panties and stuff laying around in the room. It ain't lining up. Now, if let me just be devil because devil's advocate. If I were the hotel people, somebody talking about they're going to do a lawsuit against me, I would lie too. I would lie and say, no, it ain't happened. I don't know what you're talking about, whatever, whatever. But that ain't the point. Get, I want to say the devil's in the details. This is the point. There are no receipts proving. <laughs> receipts. Receipts. There are no receipts proving. What Juanita said in that live, what Unica said on the show, there's no receipts. And so if there are no receipts, it did not happen. Now, we can talk about everything surrounding it and draw our own conclusions. But if you ain't got no receipts, you just, you just bumping your gums. 
And there's only been like three times since I've started this show, 2016, I've talked about something and did not have any receipts. And I told you I did not. I didn't. But that's not what Juanita did. She talked about it like it was the truth and really communicated to us how she felt. Her feelings of violation are probably real. But just because your feelings and emotions make it a real experience for you don't necessarily mean that it's actual and factual. That's just what you're feeling, girl. It's just what you're feeling. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Hurt, be violated, feel a certain kind of way. But you can't make somebody pay for what you just feel. That's your feeling. And you do whatever you want to do with that. But you cannot drum up sexual impropriety or sexual misconduct. I mean, that's really how it's starting to be drummed up in the media against this young mind. You can't do that against this young mind. Mm -mm, no, we can't. Negro. Mm -mm. All right, so bring me the Larry Live logo over here. So when I was talking about this, I said, this is look. I don't know, it's, it's looking like the Jezebel and this is a whole lot of stuff going on. So I made this post the other day. And this is the reason why I'm doing this show 100% because of this post and how y'all pour down y'all britches, turn around to the camera on your device and show me the deepest part of your bread baskets crack. I, I'm like, what, what, why are y'all showing your bread basket is so bad out here on the social media, social media occasions at me. I just made a statement. I've literally done a copy and paste from a book I wrote in 2012. I just, this is, and it's a follow up because I was saying I was asking questions I did not know. I said, this is looking like the Jezebel. It's what is looking like the Jezebel network. So here's a clip, not from my, Facebook page, but well, literally from my book, but what I put on my Facebook page is literally this copy and paste. Here it is. I talked about the Jezebel and witchcraft. It's from the book called The Fivefold Minister's Reference, Reference Book, and it's at the, the last part of the book. I hope I can read this on this thing a little blurry. The Jezebel herself is a master manipulator. She is a witch like none other. Her mastery is the ability to control others. Are you listening to that? Although the highest ranking demon in her network is perversion, her most prominent demon is witchcraft. Witchcraft is an energy that will attempt to attach itself to anyone in leadership, both male and female. It is the spirit that many mistake for Jezebel, but it is at work in a male. The spirit of witchcraft doesn't summate the Jezebel. Although the Jezebel is always a witch, all witches are not the Jezebel. Even the male human can be a witch. The term for a male witch is wizard or like we see in Hollywood and movies, Warlock. Now, let me, a lot of you that watch Larry Lass, like, okay, I ain't no Christian. I'm here for the comedy, although it's a lot of times the church, you know, the tea is being spilled, the church tea and the gossip. I watch it because it's funny. I don't know about all this. Well, let me go ahead and give this disclaimer right now. Like I always say, I'm the Christian. The show is not Christian, but today, this is literally going to be a Christian show because I am going to define and explain and expound in the world of Christianity. You know, in the, and that, that takes the Bible as the sacred and divine text from which we draw all of our conclusions and definitions. This is where all the what I'm saying come from. It's coming from the stories, from the history surrounding this story concerning King Nimrod and Queen Samarimus out of the Biblication. That's where we understand and we get a clarity of the history of the repeat pattern that we see in the story of Jezebel. Do you understand that? Let me say that one more again. This ain't no Christian show, but on today, you're going to hear me define and explain as a result of this whole wanting about them thing. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in that world of the biblications and Christianity and everything that I say today. So this may not be the show for you today. So you might need to click off and go to another one because that's what, that's what I'm going to be doing here on today. Now, I could have this conversation in an LRL way. One thing that I got to do is call, I just recently met a, a narcissist coach. Um, what, what they do, they help rehabilitate those that have been affected by the venom that narcissists spew. That web is all kind of complex. And I recently met her, which I probably would have her on the show, and I should have texted her before this show so she can call in so we can get that balance. So if, if I could have not done this show this way and done it just dealing with a narcissist because you, you basically see that witchcraft in every narcissist. So I'm not having the conversation that way. Like I normally have conversations here. This is going to be a Christian conversation. On the, this is your Sunday church. This is church today. This, this here is, is going to be church terms, church um, um, definitions. We're coming with the scope of the church. This, so we're, gonna, we're talking about the Jezebel. The Jezebel. At least you got a picture of what we use as a grid. Yeah, bring her over there. Set her over there. Put her over there, right there, small side, man, so we can understand get a good picture of her. I don't know who made this picture. It's not mine, but I like it. Make it small. Put it over there. What you doing? Let's click. Let's... This helper out, I tell you something. He... How is it that the helper out need a helper out? How, how you do that now? How is it that the helper out needs a helper out? The helper out needs a helper out no, no, you don't need no sister. The devil is a lie. And why did about them lying too? <laughs> this is what I think. And she might be lying by default, but she knows she's lying. There, there ain't no way. Ain't nobody with two good eyeballs. And maybe even Stevie Wonder can tell and see that this here is clear. I told y'all from the very get up the problem was this here assistant and I hadn't even met Unica. I told y'all it was her team. I hate to just toot my own horn, but beep beep. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one of the things that I saw in the comments up on that were my nerves, and I totally get it. I totally understand that. This is the reason why I spent three years, for those who do not, do not know, I spent three years in that world of pastoring for them 18 years talking about the diabolical networks that the church will face and the world will face as we are seeing the the and I'm talking in church terms, as before the return of Jesus Christ. Can I say that? I, I know there may be atheists and Muslims. I know we, used to, we still family, but you come on in that world. Come on in that world for a little Come on in that world. Before the return of Jesus Christ, I had said that there would be premier diabolical networks. And this is in, in this book right here. And you can leave the picture of that child up there. I said there will be premier premier diabolical networks before the return of Jesus Christ that the church will be battling. And those premier networks are the Gog and Magog network. These, all this has been in biblications. This ain't nothing made up out of my mind. This is what I found in the scriptures. In the scriptures. The Gog and the Magog. If somebody type that in there for the folk thing for me with biblication, they go back and they can read and find out. And then I also said the Janes and the Jambres network. That's J-A-N-N-E-S and Jambres, J-A-M-B-R-E-S network. And then the last of the premier, I just named three, of the premier diabolical networks that the church will be facing as well as the world is the Ahab and the Jezebel networks. And I put them all in one versus putting, you know, C and D. So there's A, B, C. A, Gog, and Magog network. The Janus and the Jane Brez network. 
and then the Ahab and the Jezebel network. And my thing, when I look at, and when I begin to um, research the receipts, I looked at the pattern. Even you go to that prophet boy, what's the name, Ryan Chandler, what happened with him? Then there's some other places that I ain't going to name because I haven't seen them public, but there are other pastors that have had sort of the same experience. And then some of the former employees and those that actually have worked with one of the Bible ministries. So in my mind, I'm saying, okay, this is looking like, and I'm seeing all of this. And then I know the debacle that she had with Leron online probably a year or two ago. I watched that play out and I heard from his side what happened behind the scene. My own personal experience with her I said, mm, this is looking like there's something at work. Do I believe that Juanita Bantum was a prophet of God like none other? Absolutely. Lutely, excuse me. I, I'm gonna, I said loony. I think that was because I'll be thinking about she needs some pills. Because she do need some pills and some serious help. And allegedly, put that down there. I've heard from someone that used to work at the warehouse. Now, see, if y'all don't know the whole one in the Bible story, you don't know what I'm talking about. But the warehouse, we're talking about back in 2008, 9, when, remember when she married that man that, that, that stomped her soft middle part at the Ritz right here by my house, really. And, but it ain't the Ritz no more. It's called the Whitley now. When she was um, doing, you know, then it was after no more sheets. She had that big old wedding that apparently that she got, it was over a million dollars, but $300,000 legend she got from. Now, I don't know how true this is, but since he put it on the internet that somebody owed him $300,000, what's that man's name? Myron Williams? The born, born of the sin. It's the same with, same with her. You know, they had a fallout one time because they, allegedly she stole one of his songs that he sung opening up for her conference and put it on her CD and ain't asked nobody. But allegedly... She borrowed three hundred thousand dollars from him, and she also borrowed three hundred thousand dollars from Darlene Bishop. You know, Darlene Bishop, the white woman. She really like before uh, Paula White. She was the original preaching white woman, even before Cheryl Brady. She was the original preaching white woman out of Daddy Jake's camp that he introduced us to. You know, she filthy rich. I think her husband owned oil. I think that's what they tell me. That girl got, she got, she ain't got to preach to the self, the Lord for the rest of her life. Never. But anyway, so all of this is what made me start looking this down this direction. So in, up under that post, make sure I'm following, I'm jumping around so y'all know I, I get a little off. So you got to remind me if I started telling y'all something and pulled back from it, went to something else. So just put it in the comments so y'all tell Nancy so I get back to it so you don't, get, you don't miss no information. Okay, so. When I started looking at this, I said, this looking all kinds of, uh, kinds of funny. And like I said, I do believe that this one in the bottom, prophet of God. Now, if you've been watching the show, you know there's a difference between a prophet, somebody being a true prophet, and someone being a prophet of God. A true prophet will have certain properties, certain characteristics. They will have certain results, certain powers that comes with any true prophet, whether this is a prophet or spokesman or a pronouncer or announcer for the true and living God, Jesus Christ, that's, you know, is, 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 is one with that God, or Allah, or Confucius. Every deity has a prophet. Even in the biblication, you find out that Jezebel had 450 prophets. So a prophet speaks for a divine being, a divine, a divine entity. But if they're authentically a prophet, whether no matter what entity or world they're working out of, there are going to be certain things that are going to always be there. Always. If they're a true prophet. Whether that is a prophet in, in a religious sector, like those I just named, those religions, or this is a prophet that may be in the engineering world, or a true prophet that may be in the entertainment world. There's certain things that are going to be there. There's a supernatural ability and a special set of gifts that go with being a true prophet. Then there's been a prophet of God. In the sense, in the Christian sense, as far as, I mean, I can really take it farther than that. In the religious sense, been, been a prophet of God. Because being a prophet, but I ain't going to do that. We're talking in a Christian sense. Let me not do that because that's going to expand the conversation too far. Okay, so you got the true prophet. Because if this was Larry Live not doing the Christian version, I would say 
I would differentiate between a prophet of God and a Christian prophet of God, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to stick with a true prophet. So you can understand true prophet and, and all those different layers and, and multiple multifaceted areas. And then you got the prophet of God. Y'all know unto my God, Jesus Christ. Now, y'all know, I believe that God and Jesus, is the very same essence. Okay. So that's that. Now, I believe one in the bottom, she started as a prophet of God. I believe she is a true prophet. You hear what I'm saying? Okay. But there's also what you call a false prophet. Now, a false prophet, you can't even be a false prophet you ain't even know, if you ain't never been a true prophet in the sense of the word. In the sense of the word, you have to at least be a prophet in order to be a false prophet. A false prophet is not somebody saying, oh, I'm a prophet, but they ain't a prophet. That's a person that's telling a lie. <laughs> Let me say that again. I don't think people understand that. I'm talking about that. I don't think you know what I'm saying. I was talking to myself, sorry, but that came outside. It's so funny to me how in the world, this is what I was saying, and I know you didn't understand that language, but I was talking to myself, but it was on the outside in, in a language you can't understand. It's almost like my own personal tongues. Um, so let me interpretate. I can't understand for the life of me how folk talking about they believe in Jesus, they ab absolutely hold Christians and so stupid. This is elementary. You got to at least be a prophet before you can be a false prophet. And I guess what's my he to my he a prophet he ain't no prophet he a false prophet what he is no he's a liar <laughs> a false prophet is basically somebody I'm talking in the Christian sense now the, the, this book five four minutes reference book is written in the Christian sense if you can sit me down with this book and want me to have a more expanded conversation I can make it look like like well this what's the whole point of this no this was written for the church is what I wrote it for just to help the church not be done this now our uh. uh Actually, come from a school of prophets I ran for many years, and I and there all the stuff I just compiled into a manual, and then I decided to make it a book and sell it. But anyway, so our uh, uh, a false prophet that means he was a prophet of God. I'm talking in Christian sense, and versus him, only saying what the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit of God tell him to say and only doing what the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit of God tell him to do or her to do, that means that they started following their own will, putting their own stuff in there, or using their office and all the abilities that come with being a true prophet. Notice I said true prophet, not prophet of God. Well, all the abilities that comes with being a true prophet, they manipulate those abilities to use, use them to get what they want. The Bible calls that a false prophet. For a proper example, read on the story of Balaam, what I think is in Numbers. And then you find Balaam being referenced in the New Testament scripture as a false prophet, but in the Old Testament as a true prophet. His whole thing switched up. The moment, let me tell you what happened. Tell you the story of what made a true prophet, I mean a prophet of God, go from being a true prophet. I hope y'all get new terms. Or a prophet of God to being a false prophet. See, when a prophet is true, they're doing the work. Notice differentiation. When a prophet is true, they're doing the work for good. Oh, Lord. Why well, I feel like I'm preaching? Mm -hmm. Right there, I feel a little, like I'm a little preach. When a prophet is doing the work for good, that's what makes them true. Now, this is whether he's a prophet of Confucius. This is whether he's a prophet, you get what I'm saying? A true prophet. They're doing the work for the good, for the betterment of their religion, for the betterment of the of people that, that practice that religion, for the betterment of the people, the people that they're talking to, trying to help. Let me stretch you a little bit. You know that girl, the Long Island medium? In this perspective, she would be a true prophet. Because if you study her, she says she's doing all to help people. She doesn't deal with malevolent energy. She only deals with positive energy. It's all about good, good, good. So she would be a true prophet. Now, prophet of God is a whole nother different thing. Because all, for prime example, any prophet you can name that is in the church, that's Prophet Todd Hall, 
I'm going to say opposite prophets at Brian Carn. <laughs> That's what I always say on the show. But prophet Brian Carn, prophet is one in the uh, Prophet um, Jordan. Who else is that there? Any of these prophets, any true prophet has an ability to divine. Oh, Lord. They have the power of divination. They have the power of astral projection. They have the power of healing. They have the power of creation. There are certain powers that comes with that mantle of a prophet. It just, it just comes with it. They could do it in their sleep if they want to do. But as a prophet of God, they're only supposed to do what they do when God tell them to. Whatever God say, that's what they say. So they're not predicting the future. You can go to a psychic for that. That's in the world of the true prophet. Hopefully you find a prophet that is a true prophet <laughs> and, not a, and not a prophet who is what I would call a malevolent or sorcerer. Which we may get into that today too. Who, and I'm using the sorcerer in the, in the sense of the biblication is going in the biblication, sorcerers are uh, malevolent. So who would actually use their stuff to manipulate the outcome? That's not what prophets of God do. We're in that business. We're not even into forecasting the future. Do some prophets, even the ones I name, do they tell you what's going to happen in the future? Let's look at Master Prophet Bernard Jordan. He said that Obama was going to be the next president of black man 2008, but he's going to be a puppet in the hands of da-da-da, and it's not going to be a good day for black people or for the church. That was a prediction. But do prophets predict? Prophets of God. Do prophets of God predict? The answer is no. The only reason why Master Prophet Jordan predicted that because the word of the Lord came to him and said there's going to be a black president in the year 2008 but he's going to be a pup. You get what I'm saying? So he's just a messenger of God. Now the message that came from God predicted something. It was on Jordan. Now, could Jordan peep over there in the spirit world and see what he see in the future? I told y'all, yeah. If they're a true prophet. True prophet now, let's go over here. Because there's certain abilities come with that. But as a prophet of God, we don't peep. Looking over, trying to see. Let me see if I can get what's going to happen in the next year. Mm -mm, no, that ain't what we do. Not prophets of God. Now. That ain't what prophets of God do. Do y'all understand this now? What are they saying in the comments, Nancy? Do they, are they getting it? No, not that. I ain't talking about the one somebody in error. Cause, okay, I ain't talking about one saying the error because see, they don't, they're not even on my level. They're not, because this is information that they can just go read. So they tell me right there, they ain't read, read and study on their own. And they can't even judge. See, this thing, it's not, you can go to Corinthians. You can't even judge prophecy or a prophet if you're not a prophet. Let me tell you why. Because when you get into the world of the prophet and you start trying to correct and come up against a prophet, do you know you're dealing with somebody that has powers and abilities that most likely you don't have? You're going to mess around and get hold of one of them prophets that don't mind using their gifts the wrong kind of way and get licked up. <laughs> Or mess around and touch one of the prophets of God and then become the enemy of God. And that's a whole thing. That's a whole nother thing. So prophets are supposed to be led by God. That's the only reason why we get into prediction and all that kind of stuff is because that's just what God was telling us to say. That, but that ain't our job. That is not a prophet of God's job. So I think what happened to the Wadid and some of the other folk names I mentioned is that they, they do like Balaam did. Remember? Get, like a, get back my choice. A good example of a false prophet. And a prophet of God, Balaam, he was known for whatever he said. God said that thing going to come to pass. And so a king came to him and said, look, I want to whip these folk over here. Think about the king of the Moabites. I'm going off memory. I want to whip these folk over here, but the people he wanted to whip were God folk. And he said, look, prophet, I need for you to, whatever you say come to pass. So I need for you to say I'm going to win this here war. 
And when that prophet went over there and was trying to, <laughs> before that man even got there, God already told him that the man was going to come in and do not go with his hips. But when the man came, he had Gucci, Louis Vuitton, he had Mac products, um, uh, Apple products, I mean. He had uh, 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 some Bitcoin. He had some gold. <laughs> He had some pounds. You get what I'm saying? He came with all this stuff and the prophet was like, oh my God, this is what I've been praying for. So he ran back in this chamber, said, wait a minute now, Jesus, I know you told me not to go with this man, but he bringing the stuff I've been praying for. And you know what God told him? Go ahead, go. Now somebody else about, you know what? God is playing these games because why in the world would he tell this man to go when the last time he told him not to go? Because see, this is what people don't understand. This is a spiritual law. You cannot hear, receive, discern beyond your lens and what is at the seat and core of your heart. So that's why a lot of time people can't receive certain stuff because their heart ain't open to receive it. And the only thing they can hear is more of the same old, same old. Because of a new truth or a new direction, it really stretches you in a way that is literally painful and your brain rejects a new truth as if it's foreign. So in a sense, although the scriptures say that God told him to go, if you look at this in a more expanded view, he went and prayed and was deceived by his own um, desire and lust. And so that was what he heard. Okay, go. So he goes with the person. Y'all know the story. That's when the ass started talking. And ever since then, ass has been talking over to and over to again. We can't shut asses up. Every ass is talking. Every ass. Oh, oh excuse me. <laughs> he said, look, don't see this angel sitting here about to slay you. That's why I crushed your foot against this wall. Because there's an angel there about to slay you because you ain't supposed to be going with them. That ain't worth the nigga still. Um, excuse me. I'm trying to use Negro. The Negro went still. Yeah, God. God, Negro don't sound as good as nigga. I don't care what nobody say. Negro. It don't even feel right. Yeah, God. That feels so right. I don't know how I'm going to switch that up, but I got to try. I Maybe I ain't got to do it for my show, but I do it when I'm doing the other shows for when the white folk is in control of the money and the sponsors is in trouble, is, you know, can't get no sponsor trouble. But anyway, so then the New, Te New Testament referred to him as a false prophet because he basically ended up going to that king. He was trying to curse the people. When he went there, tried to curse the people. And the only thing that came out of his mouth was the word of the Lord. And let me tell you what this, man this is a prophet of God. Use manipulation. Told the king, the only way I can curse these folks if you get them blemished and unholy or disobedient to what God told them. God told them not to mix with other folk. Send your prettiest women up in there. Them, although they say and they signify them niggas, they love puss. Send them pretty women in there. They send them pretty women in there and them holy rods of God begin to pierce in the soft middle part of each and every one of them women. So at that point, they were wrong. So then the prophet was able to curse them. You see how this... And so that's called that the methodology and the doctrine and that teaching and all there and that way that that's all referred to in the New Testament as the way, the method or the doctrine of Balaam, who is now a false prophet. And this is what I think we see with some of these prophets. Now, I'm way off and they got to the witchcraft and Jezebel. So let me just go ahead and fast forward. OK, so. You know I ramble. So let's get back to what is a witch? So put that all all the way to the side. Because I just took you somewhere where we weren't supposed to go, and it's off subject, and I got about 40 more minutes, 30 more minutes. Okay, let's go. Now, what is a witch? And this the reason why I got to find this, because up under that post, y'all kept talking about the spirit of Jezebel can operate in a, a man, and it can not. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but it's really... The spirit of witchcraft, and I'm going to show you what, show you why. Okay, now, what is a witch? Any person that has the skillful ability of influencing the feelings, thoughts, or emotions of others to achieve the outcome that they desire. I'm going to say it again. What is a witch? Or who is a witch, rather? Any person that has the skillful ability of influencing the feelings, thoughts, or emotions of others to achieve the outcome that they desire. Now, let me go ahead and say this to everybody that is watching me. We have all operated in witchcraft at some level, at some point in time. 
Especially y'all women. Y'all y'all are the masters of, of manipulation. I'm just gonna tell you what it is. Let me tell you why y'all are the masters of manipulation. Because you are the most powerful thing there is on the face of the earth. And witchcraft is its trickiest, it's its treacherous, it's most it's most treacherous in the hand of the most powerful person. And the female is the most powerful thing in the earth. Now Please understand, I understand the order of creation. I understand headship that the male human was created first. But what I know and have came to understand is the Lord God of, of the again. And at any time God does something over again, he is remedying or completing the first thing he did. And the woe man was the second thing that was made. So that is the most powerful thing. My mama used to say, the man the head, but the woman the neck. She turned that thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm just trying to tell you. So we've all been a witch or are witches on some level. As I sit here in this chair, I know what to say, what not to do in order to get or not have a certain reaction from you. When I was when I get in the pulpit and preach, I know. When I'm on the stage singing, I know it. I know exactly. You women know what to do to get a man attention. You men know what to do to get a woman attention. You children know what to do to get your mom and daddy attention. It's it's we have we, we witches. Let's put we witches. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus, I'm telling you what the truth. I'm telling you. We, we are. <laughs> Just put the definition back up there so they can get it. What is a witch or who is a witch rather? Any person that has the skillful ability of influencing the feelings, thoughts, or emotions of others to achieve the outcome they desire. Now, the key word is skillful because how the more skillful you become is now when we're starting getting to the supernatural aspects of being a witch. This is much deeper than what Larry Live can take because I really want to break that whole statement down, but I ain't got the time. All right, now, what is witchcraft? Lord, this help. Her. I mean, what, what I meant is what, what, what do witches do or what witches do? Okay, that's what I meant. <laughs> the witch uses the supernatural to control results. Now, see, this is, this is to bring me back. See, the statement I just made, I said the key word was skillful because the more skillful you become at manipulating the thoughts, behaviors, and desires or, or whatever of others in order to give you the result or the outcome that you want, then we're getting to the supernatural aspects of being a witch. I, I'm, it, because when you are now have a, a niche and a knack for being able to control the outcome and, and it works every time. Okay, now we get into the supernatural aspect. When I say supernatural, I'm talking about, we're just talking about the realm that is not flesh, the, the, realm, the realm that is not touched. We're talking about the realms of thoughts and the realm of feelings that really controls behavior. So now we're getting into, okay, a show sure enough witch. Whether they are working with rabbit foots, <laughs> whether they're working with root, with uh, roots and dolls or not, if they're able to consistently control the thought and feelings and the behaviors of people, they are into the world of the supernatural and skillfully, and they are witches. Now I'm going to, and with that being said, you have to know they're good witches and bad witches. But put that over there. That's a Larry Live statement. Let's get back into the church. So in the church, witch, witches and witchcraft, bad. But you need to understand. <laughs> you want your stockbroker to be a witch. You want your doctor to be a witch. Absolutely. You want your pharmacist to be a witch. This maybe this is too much. I'm I think I'm I think I'm I need to stay in the Christian, because we're doing it on a Christian show. Okay. What witches do? All right. The witch uses the supernatural to control results. 
The witch is a master at controlling results. Control is the main element of witchcraft. The art of controlling outcomes and controlling the will of people is the witch's pastime. Witchcraft can be summated as the art of turning another's will to do your will. And this is what I think we saw with Unica and we've seen with other people that have worked for um, Juanita, such as Tashana, um, Tanya Hall. Although these people aren't working for her anymore, but I do know other people like that have worked for her. And I ain't going to call their names, but because those two was pr very public. Is that when it comes to her dealing with certain with her staff and with people that work around her, it's almost as though they lose their will and their thinking component. And we're talking about Juanita, but there's a term I used in this book that you guys have seen me post probably the last seven years called witch pastor. There are many witch pastors out there, pastors who have the ability to just take over the will of their members and control them in such a way to where they're giving all their money. I mean, where they're even giving their body. <clears throat> where they're even offering up their children. You know, then we see this stuff here on Larry Live. This is how we end up, you know, the church being a hotbed for holes being used, children's been been molested, and money being abused because many pastors are witch pastors. They are in that whole art of turning people will and making their will be whatever their desire is. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what. Witches do. And let me say this. Get back to the post I made. Put that back up there. Because when I made this post and the statement that I made in here about a male can never be possessed by a Jezebel spirit. It's it, The whole phrase in spirit of. Spirit of literally means that we are classifying a function by a spirit. So if I eat too much, you got the spirit of eat too much or a spirit of gluttony. That's what is in biblication, the spirit of gluttony <laughs> or wantonness or however you want to put it. So you're not wrong. Really, technically, if you say this man has a spirit of Jezebel, you're not, you're not wrong. Well, you, I can't hear you wrong because you really should be saying this man has a spirit of witchcraft. Because you're, you're looking at the element of control or domination or whatever vehicle he's using to control. You are, you, that's what you're talking about, that this is a manipulator. But he, he, can, he cannot be the Jezebel. It's just as dumb as saying a straight man has the spirit of lesbianism. <laughs> I just can't, I can't, church people are so stupid, I just can't. And not all church folk, but some folk. It's because we're talking about Jezebel. If you, if Jezebel is a character in the biblications, and she has an operation in the way that she operates, so you wouldn't say that a man has a the spirit of Jezebel. And I, I know it's them Christian books, John Paul Jackson, some of the rest of them who wrote these books and said that they can be in the mail too. But he wrong. It's and as simple as that. He just wrong. I mean, there's. I mean, there's nothing wrong with admitting that your pastor don't know what he's talking about. Your favorite prophet or guru don't know what they're talking about. No, no spirit of Jezebel working in no man. That's dumb. Okay, if you're going to go with that from now on, there's a spirit of lesbianism working in every straight man in America. Let's do that and really make us look stupid. Mm -mm. That ain't how it works. It's misleading. It's a misleading statement. In fact, teaching people that a man can have a spirit of Jezebel really helps Jezebel to hide where she is working at more. Because now you're saying the man got the Jezebel. Oh, Lord have mercy. I just came with the dumbness. But anyway, so we found out what a witch is, what witches do, and we understand now why people are mistaking the Jezebel spirit and the spirit of witchcraft at work in particularly males. Now let's look at the seven components of witchcraft. All right, put that up. Y'all go ahead and screenshot that while I talk about it. 
All right, that's going to stay right there while I talk about the seven components of witchcraft. Number one, intimidation. Now, let me tell you the tactic. I'm going to give you the tactic that you'll see. You're going to start identifying these witch pastors, too, and witches in, in your workplace and every darn world. But we're particularly talking about the church right now. Okay, so make sure y'all y'all share this out and let people know about this now. So uh, what are the seven components of witchcraft? Intimidation. I'm going to give you the tactic. This is what, what the witch will say. I will scare you into doing what I want you to do or do not want you to do. We see that in Acts 4, 16 through 20. That's how intimidation works. Y'all know people that intimidate. They specialize in being intimidators. Number two, the second component of witchcraft is manipulation. Let me tell you what the tactic is. The tactic is, I will, this is what the witch would say. I would, this, this is what they're doing. I will trick you into doing what I want you to do or trick you into giving me what you think I need. Ooh, women good with them. <laughs> you wives and your girlfriends. I've seen men do this too. You know, I mean, you don't even know why you want to. You, it's my, I've been listening to you and I'm giving you this because I heard you when you said it. And she cried, oh, thank you so much. Bring me back over so they can see. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> you really love me, don't you, boy? <laughs> How you done said it 159 times and you blew in the face? He giving you what you want because you manipulated him to do it. <laughs> and some of you men so dumb you don't even know you've been manipulated. Some of the members too, you've been manipulated by the witch pastor. Like, God just put it in my spirit to sow this thousand dollars because you a man of God and you had changed my life. But what you do not know is that the pastor been on a fast just like witches do, don't eat meat, and have been dancing around in the spirit world doing chants. They may be saying praying and intercession and praying and asking God to touch the heart of the person that is in the church that got the money to sow the seed what they need. And you said, God put it in my heart and I'm sowing the seed. God spoke to me. No, it was the witch pastor in the spirit world at a level you are not chanting and creating that moment. And you just follow suit and think you heard from God when you actually heard from your pastor. He told you to sow that seed. God didn't tell you to do it. You know, this is way too much. You know, I, this is stuff we talked to the school prophets years ago. That, that, I know y'all don't get it, but this thing is real. It's real. Oh, shoot. I'm going to throw that thing up. Hmm. Okay. Okay, let me go ahead on because I know y'all probably end up just saying all kind of crazy stuff because everybody ain't going to stand this. I really expect about 10 folk to be on because this is really a Christian show today. But we're coming up out of this tonight. Nine o'clock, Dr. Holly Carter, the brainchild behind the Clark Sisters movie. We're going to have a conversation. All right, so third one, bring it back over. Seven components of witchcraft, and then determination. Second one, then manipulation. Number three, domination. Domination, the tactic, this is what the witch say. I will force you to do what I want you to do or don't want you to do. I'm move quick. Number four, adoration, the tactic. This is what it sounds like. This is what the witch was saying. I will worship and idolize you perpetually as long as you do as I want. Let me give you a prime example. Bring me over. Let me tell you how witch pastors do this now. <clears throat> Y'all um, give Brother John a hand. Everybody start clapping. Come up here, Brother John. Come make it. Brother John, I tell you, is one of our highest givers. Brother John is always here on time. This, man, this is the epitome of what it is to be a deacon or armor bearer or spiritual son in this church. You know, and God is just going to bless you. Lift your hands and God is going to open up the door for you. And, and don't let that happen. His wife can't have babies and all of a sudden she have a baby. Now everybody in the church wants to start devoting at the level that John does. People don't know that John took the equity out of his house and his credit cards are matched from giving. But everybody wants to do it. And the witch pastor know what he's doing? He know what he's doing? That is <clears throat> one of the seven components of witchcraft, 
adoration. And because the pastor called you up and adore you, now you feel obligated to continue to do what you're doing and do any and everything to keep getting his or her adoration. It's witchcraft. All right, bring it back over. We'll go to the next one. Validation is very similar to that. This is what the language is there. It says, I will sustain you and be a vocal witness of your worth in order to get you to do as I want consistently and at a considerable measure. Adoration and validation normally works hand in hand. Number six, compensation. And we see this with musicians and higher staff a lot. This is the tactic. I will give you recompense, damages, and satisfactory restitution for doing all that I want you to do. Give you a great package with the ministry. As long as you're there every time I need you to be. You know, a lot of these musicians, I'm, and they're not going to say it, but, they, but as I'm saying this, you can see now clearly that you are trading time for money. That the pastor really has done, is doing you and the church just like a nine to five do the people out there. They hire your gift and your talent for a minimal amount and then eat up your time and give you a little piece of money. You may think, yeah, I make at the church $1,000 a week, but you got to be there Monday night, Wednesday night. You got office hours. You got to be there Sunday. Do you know <laughs> if you, you can go and you might can go somewhere else and make less, but do more with the time and end up in a better space in two years. The church should not be in the business of doing that, but they are. Witch pastor. Oh my God, oh my God, folk ain't gonna like me talk about this, but it's all right. And the last one, sympathy. And this one is, you gotta watch this, especially if you just had death in your family, <clears throat> you know, if um, a funeral, a loss, a divorce, careful. Because the tactic here, the tactic here when it comes to sympathy is, I will be the space of understanding. I will be the person that feels your pain. I get what you have been through because, you know, I've been through the same thing. And it also is the person that really gives out sympathy almost like a drug dealer. And they do it and they specialize in doing that so they can get what they want out, out of people. Sympathy is the seventh component of witchcraft. And if you ask me, People can't really always see how sympathy is being used for the purpose of condern troll. All right, so the way, okay, so we got the witch and witchcraft. The last thing is Jezebel. Let's talk about the Jezebel network. Before we get, I actually named the other networks um, at the top of the show, but it's in the book. So let's go straight to the Jezebel. I want to talk about the Jezebel because it's making too long. I've been too long up here on this thing. All right, go straight to Jezebel. Bring that over. What is the Jezebel? We're not talking about the Jezebel spirit. We're talking about the actual Jezebel. We're talking about identifying the pattern, the ways, the methodology. We're talking about identifying the network and the operation that the Jezebel sets up. The Jezebel is a network of demon spirits that attempt to set up a kingdom ruled by a Babylonian queen. Remember that Jezebel and her husband followed the Babylonian rulership pattern of King Nimrod and Queen Samaritans. This is why it's so important. I gave you guys some scripture during that show, but why need to them on what you need to read to understand the world of Babylon and, the, and Nimrod and Queen Samaritans, or just Google and read the story. This web of demons begins to set up its kingdom in the fibers of the family, which spills over into the community, including the workplace, the entertainment industry, government, and, and the church. Simply put, these demons work tirelessly to keep women out of their preordained place in an effort to create a new, widely accepted idea of the female and what her role is. And you guys, we're seeing this in the church. We're seeing this in the, in the industry. I love Cardi B. God knows I do. But I really sometimes, one of the things that bother me is because in the entertainment world, she's redefining the posture and the position of a woman. And women's view and position in the whole world has really been changed. It's really a byproduct of that. And it started changing a long time ago. Of course, this cannot and will never be accomplished. The Jezebel and this redefinition of, 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 fe of female without first the man 
not being the man that he's supposed to be. Go back to the beginning of the time when it comes to Adam and it comes to Eve. A man out of place gives space for the Jezebel. Let me say it again. A man out of his place or not in his function is what gives place for the Jezebel. The Jezebel cannot exist without the Ahab. Ahab is her husband. And Jezebel literally lives off the life force that she's sucking out of Ahab. Ahab gives away his life force as the first created male human. It is literally the anointing of headship that she is sucking out of Ahab because he's not in his uh, position of headship. Oh, that maybe that's too much to understand. I, I put this in the book too. Let me read this. It says, the Jezebel cannot exist without the Ahab. Whenever there is, wherever there is an Ahab, a Jezebel is in power. I repeat, the Jezebel cannot exist without the Ahab. I mean, it literally, the Jezebel is empowered by the divine disorder that the Ahab allows. Bring me back. What you talking about the divine disorder that the Ahab allows? Because the Ahab, and mind you, this is a reflection of the original story, King Nimrod and Queen Samaritans, but that goes even back to Adam and Eve. The position that Adam was supposed to keep is this anointing of headship and being the uncommon man. <clears throat> but he did, he did not do what was proper. That's the reason why everybody blaming Eve. <laughs> But here's the reason why that this thing can manifest and this happening can, can happen with Eve because of him not doing what he was supposed to do. So that divine disorder of the male human and of the man not being the father in the home, the father to his child, the foundation of spirituality in the family. No, there can be no family without the father. There's no such thing. Everything else is a makeshift family. But the father is the beginning of the family. It's in his scrotum. He creates literally. He literally is God in the creative element in the earth because he makes the family. So when this divine disorder, there's an energy that, that comes out of, just like there's an anointing that comes out of divine order or out of positions, because that's what anointing is basically is just positions of authority. Just like there's an anointing or energy or power or authority that comes from that, divine disorder has one too. And divine disorders have his own prophets. Divine disorder has his own churches. Divine disorder has his own music. Divine disorder has his own diet. Divine disorder. Do you get what I'm saying? I think what we are more, more accustomed to is divine disorder in our world, not just in the church but in our entire world. And it is our culture. It's our way of being. It determines what we like, how we eat, what we wear, where we go, who is next, who becomes a celebrity in our culture because of the divine disorder. Oh, Lord, this is too much. I, I know I'm probably like way, some folks like, okay, now this is really not Larry Lacker. This is not. I know this is going to be your Sunday morning church and I'm about done because I'm tired. Have I done enough with this? Okay, let me say this. Okay, now, when it comes, okay, let me finish reading that, that thing I have over here. Okay, now, <clears throat> the Jezebel is empowered by the divine disorder that Ahab allows. This disorder is her power base and her power source. This perversion of God's order is her power. The only thing that can destroy the Jezebel is the uncommon man and his headship anointed, operative, and in its place in the family, community, workplace, entertainment industry, and the church. The uncommon man and the uncommon woman is God's remedy to this divine order. Look at here. Okay, so, I mean, uh, is the God's remedy to this divine disorder. So, check this out now. If we can get these niggas, excuse me, and we can get these Negroes off the bullshit that they are on and get them back to God and get them back to being men and taking care of their children, being good husbands, <clears throat> being good sons, help big mama out, and the man can get back in his place. Then the, the next thing that happens, the woman just fall into her place. 
But you know, this thing got broke down a long time ago. It got broke down a long time. And, this, and we are living in a world of divine disorder. I mean, this is what it is. Now, you and me as change agent, agents and agents of change, those of you just starting a new church and getting called to preach, you're supposed to be the remedy to the divine disorder. You ain't, been, you ain't supposed to suck up the energy that is in these systems and now be another version of the, of the same, same can new label. Mm -mm. You're supposed to be a change agent. You're supposed to be in the business of bringing back divine order. <clears throat> Being that uncommon man and that uncommon woman. Not being the woman that you see in, in the industry or on your TV and aspiring to be like these hoes. Cardi B is into their entertainment. If you're going to sing the song, if you're going to do what she do, enjoy it for what it is. Nicki Minaj entertainment, for, enjoy it for what it is, but that ain't you. That's not real. That's not what you're supposed to acquiesce to. Mm -mm, no. You're supposed to be an uncommon woman. An uncommon man. That is God's remedy to this divine disorder. Now, in order for, if you, you see, you got to go to the story of the Jezebel and you got to go to the story of King Nim Nimrod's wife, Queen Samarimus, and see what they did, how Queen Samarimus became the head and the Babylonian queen, the lie she told, the frucking she did, <laughs> the lie talking about she was giving a divine baby. You got to look at her, Jezebel, how she rose up in authority, got her own prophets, and then sent the prophets of God scared, particularly prophet Elijah, hiding up in caves and, and stuff, a woman of power. You got to go and read these stories because I'm pulling all of my reasoning and all of my references out of these historical events. And so this is where I get these spirits. So how, how does she do that? And that's how you see the network. The Jezebel, of course, it, there is, she's the queen. And this is what I was asking the question, is this one in the Bible? But then there's a network. And, and when I saw how Unica, that's why I didn't respond to Unica Oh, you have because in my mind, I'm like, oh my. And I think I may have dropped my head and put it in my hand. I said, you know what? Oh my Jesus. This girl is manifesting. This look like this look like the Jezebel and the Jezebel network. This is terrible. That's what I was thinking. So that's why my response was as it was. Because that was what was in my mind. I said, now this, I this here I know. This is what, and so that's the question on the table. So let me tell you the spirits, the key spirits of the Jezebel network. Number one is the spirit of seduction, the spirit of whoredom, the spirit of murder. Remember how she killed the, the lying spirit, the spirit of gluttony. She's never satisfied. She wants more, 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 more. Is that the reason why Juanita's rider looked the way that it is? It looks so much like Mariah Carey. <clears throat> Actually, the writer don't look that, that it, the issue, but the stuff that Unica said out her own face and the other pastor that they wanted, uh, can't no, be no white car, got to be a black car. It can't be uh, Aquafina, it got to be Dasani. Uh, this is too darn much. What is that? Also, the spirit of light. And you have to understand what the angel of light is to really understand that. And then, of course, the spirit of witchcraft. And it's that spirit that you guys see operating in males and you're saying, oh, he is, you know, that's the spirit of Jezebel in him. It's in the male too. That's just a wrong teaching. It just is what it is. All right, I'm tired. I ain't going to say nothing else. But I'm going to take five minutes and I'm going to open up the lines. Whatever you guys want to say, you can call in. You can see it. Uh, I'm able to take five or six different calls. Um, and then tonight, Dr. Holly Carter is going to be here. That is the brainchild behind the Clark Sisters movie. And I'm going to ask some questions. And we're going to find out what else she got going on. And I'm going to tell her something that she does not know live on air. Say what now? Just Google it. You can find the book. Just type in the fivefold minutes of reference books. Larry D. Reed. It'll come up wherever it's at. Because I don't sell it at my office no more. It's too darn much going on. I ain't got no employees. If I had when I had employees, it didn't matter. We done shipments out every Monday. But nope, not no more. I'm not pastoring no more, and I'm not pastoring again ever. 
unless they something. I got a little window open in my soul that God want to tell me something. If it, it's about that, it's about that little. <laughs> but that nope, that's done. Twenty years over. Y'all niggas is mm. these Negroes is crazy. I'm not. That's just too darn much. I like to die. I'm trying to help everybody and their mom, and then you try to help them. Now you blame for this, that, and other. Mm -mm, no, go somebody else. Well, that's fine. But this thing studied. If you read the story, you 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 are told if you think, and that's fine. We don't have to agree. But in my opinion, you just ain't studied because the Jezebel spirit. You're saying the operation, the character, and the ways of the Jezebel are in this particular male. He would have to, number one, be a female to be in that world of operation because of who the Jezebel is. The only spirit that can be manifested in the Jezebel or the main one is the spirit of control. That's the one I think people get mixed, mixed up with. It could be this, the spirit of whoredom. It could also be that spirit of light and some other thing. But then he's probably a, more like a wizard or like Hollywood say, or like I said, or like we all just, the culture have adapted, warlock. But he's not the Jezebel. <laughs> calling in a Jezebel spirit I can't really say you wrong but it's misleading it's so misleading and you really help the Jezebel to hide because what you're probably seeing in this man is what he learned from the Je it's probably the son of a prophet of the Jezebel that's probably what it is but because you keep calling it the spirit of, of Jezebel you're really not unmasking all of what is behind this this thing that could be manifested in this male. I mean, and you guys, I mean, that's what, I wish you just trusted me. I mean, this, this is not something that I read in a book or every book on the Jezebel says what you guys are saying. But this is what I know from what God revealed to me and what I walked out. And I, Je, the Jezebel kill prophets and that thing is the Ahab and the Jezebel network because you can't have the Jezebel network and the Ahab network's not operating that thing will snuff you out and kill you dead <laughs> and I came through that so that was my training so you can't understand spiritual warfare and you not go through darkness you learn about God actually in the darkness you learn to be a warrior and a spiritual warrior in darkness. Those of you that are dealing with some in a very dark spaces, one or two things are gonna happen. Either you're gonna um, propagate more of that or you're gonna pour out or multi multiply more of that in your life. Develop a relationship of God almost like a slave, help me master, help me master, and have these moments of, you know, epiphanies and excitement and great times but you're mainly going to have low time and it's because you you just on the wrong side of the darkness but when you really get in that darkness properly postured you become such a skillful warrior and it also gives you a cutting edge in any and everything that you do because you got the data, you got the information, you you have all of the stratagems and the strategies, you know what fails just as good as you know what works. And everybody don't know that. And sometimes knowing what fails really gives you the remedy quicker, faster, and ahead those that ain't got a clue on what's supposed to be done. Darkness taught you that. And that's what I'm saying about this. When it comes to this, I was in the darkness of it twice. <laughs> so I know this. And this is the reason why my question is, because mm, I don't like putting stuff on people. I give a chance to the chance at the chance. But I was looking over there, put it over there. I was looking over there at Nita. Can you put it over there, nigga? I mean, Negro. I just asked you to do it. You should probably read them comments. Get up out in them comments. I was looking over there at her like this, and 
And I was asking questions. I'm like, no, wait a minute. This is looking like something I'm very familiar with. And this will be how it will happen. Prophet of God. False prophet. Witch. Witchcraft. The Jezebel. That, that will be how. Because them things, whatever is poured on you, that thing that's smeared on you, it, whatever your mountain, you, it's like you change a shirt, you can change a mountain. The mountain is basically a shirt or a cloak or, or a cape. You can take it on, take it off. And I think this is what has happened. Now, let's let's get into this. And I'm going to take one minute and say this and take calls. What makes women sus, um, susceptible, I think that's the proper word, to the Jezebel is pain, wounds, undealt with conflict. And you got to remember that you also got to read the story to understand the Jezebel. Othelia. You got to read the story concerning Princess Othelia or Queen Othelia in the Bible because it's the same pattern. All of these are patterns and types for the Jezebel, Queen Samarimus, and Othelia. I think that's how you say it. A-T-H-A-L-I-A-H in the Bible. You got to remember that she is a wounded daughter at the core of Jezebel. She is a forsaken daughter. She is a, a traumatized daughter. She's, she's, she's been raped or she's been molested or she's been used. She's actually a princess or a queen. She actually has the, the prophetic operating in her life heavily. That's, that's what she is at the core. And she can either go the route of the prophet of God or go the route of the Jezebel. Okay? All right. There's nothing me talking. Let's take the phone calls. Let's go. Call it in in 2715. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Larry. This is Joanne. I'm in Texas now. I was in Florida. How you doing? <laughs> hey there. I'm doing good. Hey, I was calling to, to encourage you. Great teaching today. Um, I have personally went through uh, a lot of the things that you have shared and um, with leaders, and it is uh, true. Once you study and show yourself approved, you can understand what's going on. And then one of the things that happened to me is they start singling you out as the person who is the rebel or the person mm. who won't go with the program or mm -hmm. the person who won't lift up their hands, or the person who won't give. And mm -hmm. so because you have a discerning spirit, and so what they try to do then is to try to single you out why you ain't participating. Mm -hmm. or, or say stuff like everybody else in this house is in the, in the spirit, but one or two people. See, <laughs> they do that kind of thing too. Wait, so you're talking about a witch so pastor. I just... I, <laughs> I, mm, yes. Yeah, you know, you got it. I just want to share with you that I know you're uh, on, on on track. Uh, we encourage you. We you have a remnant that is praying for you and support you, you, and we love you, Larry. I love you too. Thank you, y'all. Hashtag up under this show. If y'all watching, even if you're watching this this um, live, I'm not live on YouTube. Um, I'm live right now on Facebook. <clears throat> and remember tonight, Dr. Holly Carter, the one that came up with the whole car system movement, I'm interviewing her tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hashtag Witch Passes. I just done it up on the Facebook. Um, and, of course, I'm going to be doing it in YouTube. Uh, that's what she was talking about, Witch Pastors, because today's show is about the witch, witchcraft, and then the Jezebel, because there is a difference. All right, let's go. Call it ending in 7710. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. What up? What's up, Larry? What's up? Not much. Hey, I'm gonna keep my name. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna keep my name unknown. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to call. It's the first time I ever got through to you. I'm mm -hmm. a, I'm a listener. I'm subscribed to you. I'm actually getting ready to start doing the Patreon. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a, I'm actually a musician. I play prophetically. I don't like to tell what I do because that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. But a lot of the issues and stuff that you talked about today that happened in the church is a lot of the stuff that I've dealt with over the years mm -hmm. um, in the body of Christ. And I'm, I'm one 
uh, that's really, my heart is really out to God. You know what I'm saying? And it's mm-hmm. like to hear the things that you talked about in your book. I'm getting your book too. I'm not just a person that talk and say I'm going to do something. I'm going to actually go get the book because that, what you talked about today, really helped me so much. Oh, wow, you know, I was telling my wife, yeah, yeah, I was telling my wife, I said, uh, uh, Larry was church for me today. Now, <laughs> granted, I play for a church and I go to, uh, you know, I go to a church and I help with the worship and everything. But what I got today was actually service for me. Wow. That's, just, that's saying a lot. Great. That's saying a lot. So, Larry, man, I just want to tell you, keep doing what you're doing. You know, you you definitely a help for me. Um, and you touched some things that, that really had me thinking about, you know, the years. And I'll say this, and I don't want to be long because I know I only have so much time. Mm-hmm. But to be a musician for a long time and to be connected, and when you feel like you're connected to something that's not taking you where they're going, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times it just have you looking and, and you know, I, I'll be questioning God, like, God, what are you doing with my life? Mm-hmm. You know, what it is that you're doing with my life? Am I connected? You know, am I connected to the right thing? Is mm-hmm. is, is it witchcraft going on or what mm-hmm. what's going on that I'm not moving because I know what's on my life or what's yeah. holding me up? You know, I've dealt with a lot of manipulation from churches and, you know, everything. I've dealt with all of that stuff. And it's like to hear what you were saying, you know, I like to be sound, so I don't like to say stuff, you know, just anything. Mm-hmm. So basically what I'm trying to say is I appreciate the book. I appreciate what you what you put up there, and I appreciate you even coming on. And I know you don't want to be a pastor no more, and that's all great, but I told my wife, you're my, you my online pastor. Okay, so, I'll be your online you know. pastor, but not, not, I, I could do that. <laughs> thank, you so, <laughs> thank you so much for calling in. <laughs> oh, that's a problem, man. You all have right. a good one. You too. All right. All right, next one. Call it in forty-seven, forty-nine. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Larry. You should call me from North Carolina. Hey there. And I wanted to tell you that I appreciate your, your teaching today. I have actually, in the local church, experienced everything that you had listed on that list. And all I could do when it happened was just like Seven have my mouth wide open. It's amazing to see them operate. But one thing I was wanting to bring about. Um, when you were talking about that spirit and what we've seen over the past few weeks, what was so disheartening to me and what amazed me so much was you, I've been following you for a little while now, and you've talked about primarily what you've dealt with is abuse in the church directed towards women. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, we've seen a lot of issues where we've seen, you know, children who are not being fathered. Mm-hmm. We've talked to uh, first ladies who haven't been abused. And what amazed me was such abuse. High levels of abuse did not get this much attention. Um, mm, I, okay, mm, like you said, we mm. respect how she felt. We respect yeah. how she felt. Um, if she felt like, you know, because he's seen her undergarments, that, you know, I respect. That's what you felt. Mm. But in the past few weeks, the level of abuse we've seen, and even I've seen some of the people who followed you, and I know, you know, you see a reoccurring name um, mm. as, you, as, you, as a follower of yours. And some of the reoccurring things I like, that, that was going hard for her, I was like, I did not see this much. It brought me back to when Andrea Garrison was at the Prophetic College, and she was talking about how, you know, she was disregarded when mm-hmm. she came out about what happened to her. I was like, so on the level of abuse, when you're talking about, okay, you know, the whole, like you said, the bees came out. People were just, I've seen so, like you, I, I'm tired of seeing it almost on my timeline, the people who are going back to bat for her. But like, well, we have this other group of women mm-hmm. who have been abused, you know, so deeply hurt. When, you, when, they, when your caller called in the other day and she was talking about how she had a stroke behind her daughter being abused in the church, why don't we have that same heart and passion for these mm-hmm. women that we have? For the, I'm, not, I'm not belittling her situation. Okay, that's what she felt, but I'm almost in my mind like, okay, it's, it's her underwear. He, she felt, but the whole world came against this man. You know, they were just going hard at him. Why do we not have but, but, this? But hold on, let me, let me say this. Let, this. let me say this. Let me say this. I got to say this because it's been burning me to say this is one of the main things I saw sitting in the chair that night. Because let me tell you what I know because I've dealt with her. She feels as though, <clears throat> remember I said what's at the root of the Jezebel. She feels as though, and I'm not calling her that, but it's just looking like it. At the root of its pain, she said that everybody is after her. The blogs, the TV, everybody is after her and hate her. I think 
that she made a business move, that she used this mm-hmm. opportunity to get the, the sympathy of people that had really threw her away. And she knew without receipts, and now we know because the man said, I didn't even see your prophetic panties in your Baptist bra. She used the opportunity to get the sympathy of the women that probably just maybe threw her away and won't deal with her no more. That takes take us back to those spirits in the Jezebel network. This literally is witchcraft. This is getting... Mm-hmm. Because we've seen try, it before. Try, Think you, about when she had that that situation with her husband. She turned it around. Do you not remember that? It was remember within that? 48 hours. The net, within 48 hours, yeah, she, she turned was on it around TV. And, and she drew those women to her, all oh, the abused women. I'm like you. you now, go. look at me. You know, she took that attention off of her there you and go. capitalized on that. that. There you go. And that is what the we've Jezebel seen it before, does. Yeah. Now, remember what I said, the story of Jezebel, you got to go back to Queen Samaritan and to um, Nimrod because that's the pattern that, that we're seeing. That's what um, Queen Samaritan did. Her husband that was deified as a god, although she was a hoe, she made like that God dropped her down into the spirit world wherever King Nimrod was and then she got pregnant with his baby. And so then she came mm-hmm. back. I'm pregnant with the the next with the God with the next God. She sees the opportunity of his death, which history records that she, uh, just like Jezebel had her hands in his assassination. That's why I don't know mm-hmm. if I put it on thing the spirit of assassination to do that in order to her to rise up on the no that's not the right one Nancy. i didn't give you the right one because the spirit of assassination is supposed to be in the keys uh, um, that's in the place of murder so if you got this the key spirits of uh, jezebel network this is the wrong one it should be the spirit of assassination she rolls up the power off of a, off of an assassination this is the same mm-hmm. thing what juanita did this is why mm-hmm. i peeped all of this mm-hmm. i said you assassinated this man's character and used it as an opportunity to raise your brand back up and get mm-hmm. compassion to people. I said, I know that tactic. Because mm-hmm. the man ain't doing it. have seen it before. Yeah, because she's done it she with weeks. Went after her, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. We've seen it before. I remember I just I followed her greatly after, you know, no more sheets. But then after the million dollar wedding and I seen it on TV, I was like, oh, I'm not feeling this anymore. And then, like I said, when, you know, going into the upper realms and all, I, I, I started falling off. But I noticed after her and her husband had that big fiasco, she flipped it. And I was like, yeah. she's that girl is cunning. That's amazing. She flipped it and, and now able to capitalize and bring all this a new era of a new era of women like come, you know, under me. Mm-hmm. I, I'm like you and we've all been abused. I'm like, no, you mm-hmm. hit him first. I, I see. Mm-hmm. I see. But yeah. okay, well Larry, okay, I thanks. appreciate you. I just all want right. to call you. Have a good day. All right, you too. Okay. Bye bye. I'm gonna tell you, I I I'm not a suspicious person. I might tell you I'm all, I'm terribly optimistic. You can be lying to me and I fully believe. Like, oh really? I fully believe. But when I get that check, <laughs> it's just a bad day for you because I won't, I won't let it go. Although I'm through with this one, either thing, let it come up again. But I peeped that. I said, mm, mm. Kenda, I think I did email that to you. You didn't put the new one in there. And um, I, I, this, she rose up on the heels of this assassination. Yeah, here it is right here. Let me put this up so people can get this one. I'm about to email it to you. Uh, and a lot of people can't recognize Jezebel unless she's aggressive. In the book, I talk about there are two types of Ahab, um, and then there's two types of, of Jezebels. And one is aggressive, one is passive. And I nicknamed the Jezebel, the passive one is Jessica. <laughs> And I nicknamed the aggressive Jeze. And so a lot of people can't recognize the Jezebel unless they see um, that aggressive demeanor there. But no, there is a Jezebel that is a master seductress. And she appears as a holy woman of light. and But she's controlling and manipulating everything behind the scene. And you have to have a, uh, a, some spiritual eyes to be able to peep this. Because this one is, that one is the most lethal. Ones like, yeah, bring this is the new list. The ones like um, 
like are like Jesse, the Jesse, the aggressive are easy to spot normally. But the one I traded out that spirit of murder for spirit of assassination because that's what I was supposed to be, and I didn't send it to him right. The one Lord Jessica, Woo! you be you wake up dead. That Jessica is dangerous. All right, let's take a few more calls, and then I'm done. Call it in, and then 3364. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Essie from um, Raleigh, North Carolina. Hey, Larry. Hey there. How are you? I'm good. I can't complain. Good. Um, I just wanted to say that it's, it's just so amazing how many people that are in the church, how how they have dealt with this spirit for so many years and have mm. been under pastors that operate in this spirit, this warlock spirit. Mm. Um, and how people, it's so easy for people to say, well, why did you stay for so long? But when this spirit is in operation, just looking at those seven different steps that you just listed a little bit ago, a little while ago, just looking at those, it's so easy for people to say, how would you stay so long? But mm. when they operate in all those seven mm. different areas, using the word of God to control and to manipulate it's just the spirit of bondage and control mm -hmm. that you'll find yourself in for so many years. Yes, sir. I was in a ministry and yes, dealt sir. with it for 22 years, Larry, mm -hmm. in complete bondage, yeah. dealing with this spirit. Yeah. And then they will cry and pretend to be broken. And I'm sorry to bring it up. I know you said you weren't going to bring it up again, <laughs> but the way Juanita Bonham, I'm sorry mm -hmm. to call her name. The way she cried on that video that is a spirit of deception. Mm. You're not broken. Mm. You're not broken. You don't have a humble spirit. Absolutely not. That's a spirit of deception mm. that that spirit of Jezebel carries. Mm. I've yeah. seen it oh so many times. But she cried to lure people in. Mm -hmm. See this? She cried to lure them in to get them on her side. But Larry, it's not a broken and a contrite spirit. Mm. It's a spirit of deception. Honey, it's of the devil. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Neither need to sit out somewhere. <laughs> but I ain't going to get on her because that's just a whole other thing. But, but I just but, want you to know that the teaching that you did today mm -hmm. was so amazing and so mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. Larry, I'm read you on the stuff. Larry, read you smart. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm serious. Listen, Larry, read you smart and you anointed. Larry, you oily. <laughs> You might not, you, you listen, listen, honey. You might not be a pastor no more, but let me tell you something. Not in the not in the, in the in the traditional way, but let me tell you something. You are so effective, mm. and you affect so many lives. You affect my life. Wow. Listen, I'm on Facebook because Larry Reed Live. I wow. just go on Larry Reed Live all day, sneaking at work. <laughs> okay, listen, and I know I got. To be <laughs> I'm like, Lord, what does Larry talk about? Well, today? Let, let me say this to but you. I just, let me say this to you. You yes. sound like I can listen in your voice because I know people that understand with, because I can tell that you've had your own bout where you had to confront a witch pastor. Oh, and yes. so oh my and, and I'm I really can do an entire show with just this seven components of witchcraft and just talk about witch pastors and break down and show the schemes. Please. And show all oh, of the God. the complexities that are used willfully to basically yes. build their empire on your back. You know, so I'm trying to interesting. Interesting. We'll see. And that. I'm telling you, so Larry, when you get a chance, please do that. There's so many people that you don't understand, like that you that you're helping today that are in ministries currently. They operate under that spirit. But I know I've got to go. I'm going to say this one quick thing. You have to have a prodigal son experience. You have to come to yourself. Mm. I had to come out of myself and walk out from under those chains. Mm. These people under the sound of your voice today, they have to come to themselves. Yeah. And until they do, that spirit will not be broken and destroyed over their life. Mm. But I pray that you do this series on this show so that many lives will be changed and many people can be free. Mm. Gotcha. Thanks so much for calling in. Yeah. Okay. Love you, Larry. Bye. I love you too.
you know, I and I was really torn about doing the show. I'm gonna go on my other page and do it, but I talked with myself and those that are in my life. I said, you know, I'll go ahead and do it on because this is a this is a Christian show today, really. And and like I said, I'm Christian, but the show ain't. You know, so that really ain't what um I was trying to do. But I'm i I'm looking at on Facebook, you know, between seven and se- about seven hundred of you guys have been on the entire time listening to this on a Sunday on the weekend. So there has to be something that there has to be a reason for that. So maybe I'll do that later. Um, this is an entertainment show. And I pepper in the entertainment certain stuff. But this is a whole lot on today. This is like, this, this is like online church. A cyber church. And that ain't what I'm trying to do. It really is not. I got other stuff I got to do. Uh, I do s- stuff like this with the people I coach and the people that sign up on Life Guide. But this ain't how it's supposed to go. I'm going to take a few more calls. All right. Caller in and in 2418. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What up, helper outer? <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? This is yeah, Larry. Yeah, no, no. Cause you, I can hear, I know, because y'all been doing that, man. Dare you. Don't nobody show that man no respect. Everybody like, hey, Larry. <laughs> I'm going to speak to the helper outer first and then you. Okay? Okay, you got to speak he where he can that, hear. That, Hold he on. He's going to speak where you can hear him. Next, you got to holler so he can hear you. He told you, hey. What up, helper out of AKA nigga? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Larry? What's going on, man? Not much. I want to share a few things here. Uh, I'm from Virginia. Okay. First of all, I know the dude John personally, right? Mm. So when I heard the story, <clears throat> I was like, nah, you know what? That's not even that dude's character. Mm-hmm. So I waited until everything came out. I was like, you know what? I knew something wasn't right. I knew why he was lying, whatever, whatever. So, good teaching on tonight. Mm-hmm. For every time you said you preached for 20 years and it irritated me, today made up for that. Because that was a good teaching. <laughs> okay. That alone today was good teaching and preaching right there. Gotcha. You know, my concern is with the whole thing that it ties into what you taught on tonight. Is that damn um, a writer, that damn 70, 60, and 60, mm-hmm. 40 split? Mm-hmm. I believe in a past, a past, whatever, they should get paid. That's their job. That's what they go to school for, whatever. But when you're sitting here talking about taking people money that they work hard for, believing what you tell them, that Jesus is going to come save them, just live by faith, keep giving their money, and you come in, you take half the money, your church takes the other half of the money. Come Monday, they trying to figure out how to live, pay their bills, buy food, put gas in their car. Mm-hmm. That's what I got a problem with it. Mm-hmm. And I used to attend a church in Portland called Bible Way. Mm-hmm. And it's one of them churches to where I would sit there, especially when the father would come down from New York and say, oh, I need 20 people to give $1,000. And I'm sitting there counting, like, by the time he got finished preaching, he didn't collect at least $50,000, $60,000. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I've seen that Jasper Bell spirit, you know, work to get people to do what they want them to do. And I think it's unfair to tell these people live by faith while these pastors, bishops, and teachers, and leaders are living off the people's money. It's not right. And I enjoy everything you say. The only thing I do disagree with is when you say, I'm not telling people to leave. This stuff has to be called out. It's just like if you go to a bad restaurant and you keep getting bad service mm-hmm. after bad service after bad service, you're going to eventually like, look at here. <laughs> Y'all don't fool up with this steakhouse, okay? I done went there three times. They got roaches. The food ain't done. The people are nasty. We got to start calling these churches out. Like that guy that's running around line with the bad hair that's talking about he's seen Jesus. Yeah. Uh-uh. Black the Bible says him. no man see Jesus and live to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Black Ben here. <laughs> you know, and every time I find a pastor, they're like, okay, I can sit under his ministry. They do something to mess it up. John mm-hmm. Gray, mess it up. The white guy, Stephen Furtick, mess it up. You know, the only person mm-hmm. that I can keep relating to calling my pastor 
is Daddy J. Because mm. he has went without scandal. You know, so, yeah. But keep doing what you do, man. Thanks, man. Thanks so much for calling in. Um, one of the reasons why I say don't leave, please understand. Because if you would get me in the private privacies, I said, if you don't get your stuff and get the whole hell and the heaven up out that place. But there are certain things I do say and don't say because of legal issues. Uh, y'all should see my lawyer bill. I, I don't want to. Um, I ain't got time. And we're in. The cease and desist letters, they aren't. I'm mean, answer back to them. I have to do my lawyer to get them that, that cost, but it's not terrible. But, but as many as I get, and then some of them try to make it lawsuits and all that kind of going on, it really adds up. It really does add up. Um, so I do thank every last one of you. I'm going to go ahead and say this, although I'm not really live. Thank you, too, for the super chats and Facebook and YouTube for the cash apps. And those of you that tithe, there are those of you that, that tithe. And of course, I am a nonprofit, the NBN Network, 501c3. And thank you for that as well. And this happened, you know, thank you for all of that. <sighs> Y'all, I'm tired. I don't want to take no more phone calls. I got to be right back at 9 p.m. with Dr. Holly Carter, the one that came up and created the Clark Sisters movie. And the preachers of LA, this, that, and the other. We're going to do an interview with her tonight. And I'm going to ask her some questions surrounding the whole Clark sister saga. All right. See you later. Bye.